We are here in Wageningen in a community garden. And if you look around, you see different plots that are maintained by different owners. Despite rules and regulations, these plots are maintained differently. Why is that? Not only do the plot owners respond differently to the rules and regulations, but they also interact with each other. They also respond to each other. The community garden is in fact a small scale example of what we call a complex adaptive system. There are many examples in the world of complex adaptive systems, usually at a much larger scale. For instance, land use systems, natural resource management systems, and even society itself. A powerful way of modeling complex adaptive systems is through agent-based modeling. In an agent-based model, we represent stakeholders as agents. Those agents have a relation with each other, they communicate with each other, they send each other feedback and they show some behavior. By agent-based modeling, we uh, can represent the real-world system in such a way that it allows us to experiment with it. If you like, we can run thousands of simulations uh, and exploring new scenarios. I believe that agent-based modeling is a very powerful tool to better understand the real world. If you look at the news, you will see that many models that are used in policy making or in agriculture, in tourism, in life sciences, don't work very well. Why? Because they assume that people will behave according to some new rule, which they don't. Because people uh, are adaptive, so they will adapt to a new situation and they're all different. So uh, one person will do something, another person will see it and also do it. Uh, sometimes people suddenly don't want to take vaccinations while it would be better for them and so on and so forth. In agent-based models we can do justice to the variety and the diversity of human behavior and to the drives that uh, make them behave as they do and we can use social science for that. This is also something that many of the PhDs working with agent-based models are already doing. The goal of my project is to analyze how actors can join forces to achieve sustainable management of potato lane flights. To analyze these interactions, I use agent-based modeling. This is a very useful tool to analyze the system dynamics, since it can represent both social and biophysical aspects in a spatial environment. Because agent-based model is process-based, it allows for the representation of feedbacks so that different influences from the subsystem, such as the market, the environment, the policy institutions, can play a role in determining the behaviors of the land users. To take a dynamic perspective, I'm using complex adaptive systems approaches. This helps capture the interactions between, between and among people and their environment. This is critical because it provides insights in how vulnerabilities emerge, as well as how the system as a whole is affected. In my model, I uh, simulate pig behavior in which I include factors that affect the behavior of pigs. And I use agent-based modeling because this can give me insight into the system and system behaviors. Society is now in a phase where there's no longer unlimited growth. We realize very much that everything is limited and uh, in danger of being exhausted and not sustainable. And what agent-based models can do is bring the diversity and the complexity of human behavior into models used for policy making. Now, it's not easy to build those models because you need not only all kinds of empirical data, of which we have more than enough, all the big data sources, but especially you need what I would call a smart theory. You need theory at a level of the individual, of the group, of the society to put into those models. We have that kind of theory in Wageningen. We have scientists that can put them into the models. We have other scientists that can do quality testing of the models. We have international contacts and we have lots of young, eager students.